Hello, my name's Lance Williams. Welcome to another session of Healing Journeys today. I'm glad to be with you again. I want to talk to you about something today that will radically transform your life if we apply it. If we apply it. Now, many people may hear this word and not apply it to their lives, but I can promise you if you hear this word and you apply it to your life, it will transform your life because what we're going to talk about today, this very thing, it impacts every single person. And what I want to talk to you about today, it's actually referred to in the Greek text as skandaleon. And before I, I tell you what it is plainly, I want to describe this to you. Skandaleon, that meaning in the Greek text means a wood stick. That's right, a wood stick, and this wood stick, it holds open a door. And what it's referring to is when this, this wood stick is holding open a door, so if you can picture, uh, if you can picture this, say you got this, say you got this box, and let's say it's a, it's a raccoon, and there's some bait in the box that the raccoon wants, but it can't get by without knocking this stick out from under holding up this door on this box. Well, this raccoon goes in to get the bait, knocks over the stick, the door closes, it's a trap. It's a, it's a trap for the raccoon. Now the raccoon is trapped. Well, that thing that was holding that up, that stick, it's, it's scandaleon. That's what it is in the Greek. And so this scandaleon is the stick holding up the door, and when that's hit out from under it, then the animal is trapped. So this word translated into the scriptures, it's talking about offense, being offended. So scandalion is translated offense in the Bible. So the Bible teaches clearly, if we have an understanding of that word, it is clearly talking about that offense is a trap. When we take on offense, it is a trap that's hard to get out of a lot of times. I know people that they still talk about things today that happened years and years ago. That's offense, and it's, it's eating them up from the inside out. It is a trap. The Bible clearly teaches that. So when we choose to take the bait, when we choose to accept that scandalion, that offense, it is a trap. And it can be very, very damaging to you and one the ones around you as well. Offense, all of us face that. It is a consistent thing that we come face to face with. But it's up to us. Do we choose to be offended like most people do? Or do we choose to resist that and put that on the Lord? This, this is a, if we can understand what offense is, which I just explained to you, and we understand how to deal with it, this can transform your life. I'm telling you. Well, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but so let's talk about some biblical examples of being offended. First, I want to talk about Joseph and his brothers. I've been studying through Joseph recently, and it is a fantastic story. It is incredible. So much to get from that. So Joseph. Joseph, if you're familiar with the story, was obviously the favorite to his father. And the other brothers knew this. And it created resentment. They got offended because Joseph was their father's favorite. And so they got offended. And it, like I said, if you're familiar with the story, his brothers got offended and ended up, they were going to kill him. And ended up selling him into slavery. 
And so we read this story, and you know, a lot of us know this story, but when when he was sold into slavery, think about what this think about what this traces back to. It traces back to the brothers being offended and letting resentment harbor in their heart. And it led them to, to not only selling their brother into slavery, but then all the heartache that not only did that caused on Joseph, but all the heartache that that caused on their dad. It all come from a root of bitterness that came from offense, being offended. That's powerful. How about with David and Saul? David, I mean, he was a godly man. God was giving him victories, and people started singing that Saul has killed his thousands, but David his ten thousands. God was causing David to prosper, and Saul got offended. He got offended, and what did that lead to? It led to Saul continuously trying to destroy and trying to actually kill David. Many, many times, he was really close to killing David. And that come from a root of bitterness. It come from choosing to be offended and letting that create resentment. You see what this stuff leads to? Offense has destroyed families. It's destroyed father and son, father and daughter relationships, mother and son, mother and daughter. It's it's destroyed friendships. Offense can be a very destructive thing. But if we can learn to deal with this properly, then it don't have to destroy in our life like it does so many. How about Jesus and the religious leaders? Yes, it was the plan of God for Jesus to go into the cross. To give himself for us. But naturally speaking, what caused this? It was the religious leaders being offended at Jesus. They were offended. They were offended by Jesus early on, but especially when Jesus made himself equal to God. They were offended and said, this man speaks blasphemy. And so in their hearts, that's, that's why they went about things that they did. That's why they wanted Jesus crucified. Even when they were presented with Jesus, the creator, their creator, and Barnabas, not Barnabas, how do you say it, Barabbas or whatever, the criminal. When Pilate presented the two and said, which one do you want to let go? They, they, they wanted the criminal to be let go and wanted Jesus, who had never sinned, who loved them perfectly, who told the truth, there was no deceit in him, and they shouted for Jesus to be executed. Why? All because of offense. Because they were faced with the scandalion, the offense, and they took it. And that created a root of bitterness in their heart. And it led them to want to destroy the very one that had created them. And the one that loved them perfectly. That's powerful. Offense is so deadly. There's been so many times throughout my life that I've had opportunity to be offended. And certainly before I came to Jesus, even after I came to Jesus, I'm sure there was offense at times. But especially before Christ, there's so many opportunities to be offended. I remember, you know, when I, one of my family members is, when I was doing drugs and all that and not living life to the fullest and not certainly not living for Christ but one of my own family members 
is the one that called the police on me uh, the time that I went to prison. And I tell you what, I was offended. Not that I just went to prison, but I was offended that somebody so close to me would call the police on me. And in their eyes, they were doing the right thing. And I certainly now, I, I'm, and I'm not saying I totally agree with the situation, but I do see where they're coming from now. But I was offended for a long time. And when I was in the county jail waiting to go to prison, I didn't have any contact with this person. And I had offense in my heart. I had resentment toward this person. And when I was in contact with other family members, I was not in contact with this one. And there's, um, you know, when somebody's in county jail and they're going to go to prison, some jails allow there to be what they call a contact visit. So most visits are either done through, well, now it's through a, a lot of them are done through a computer screen. But at that time, it was done through a, like a glass wall and you had to pick up a phone and talk, talk through the glass. Or pick up the phone, look at them through the glass and then talk on the phone. Uh, but when somebody's going to prison, they can apply for what they call a contact visit. And that's where you actually get to see your family in person. You get to hug them and everything. And it's, it's a big thing. But I told my family, I do not want this. And this person was very close to me. And I said, I do, I do not want this person coming. And at that point in my life, I was totally done with this person. I didn't want to have any more contact with them. I didn't want to have anything to do with them. Why? Because of offense in my heart. Because of something that they did to me. Really, I was doing it to myself, but they provided the opportunity and help, you know, the police arrest me. You know, looking back on it, I'm glad I got arrested when I did so I could get all that stuff behind me. But still, I had a fence in my heart for quite a while. And I thank God for this. And I was I was a Christian, but I really wasn't living for the Lord. Even though I'd in jail, I would get clean, and I would st I would still develop a closer relationship with the Lord. And so I I believe this was divine. I believe God was working in my heart. But I ended up in my heart one night in a jail cell. I forgave this person and wrote a letter, and I just didn't want I didn't want anything uh, to happen. I didn't want anything to happen to this person or to me, and us be in this state and I keep referring to this person as this person uh, but I I don't mind telling you who it was it it was actually my own mother and I had resentment in my heart a long time and in that moment I I remember writing the letter and I remember I, I I don't know all the emotions I was feeling. I just started weeping. Because I truly forgave my mother and my heart that day. And again, my mom thought she was doing the right thing. And many of you might think she, she was. And I, I certainly don't blame her now. Uh, but at the time, I, I for sure didn't agree with it. But I remember writing that letter. And the tears were just splashing down on the paper, smearing the blue lines on the paper. But at that moment, I chose to forgive my mom. Even if some of you may think that she didn't do anything wrong, and she certainly don't think she did anything wrong. She looked at it as helping to preserve me. And I can certainly, like I said, I can certainly see where she's coming from. But... 
I still had a fence in my heart, whether you think she did wrong or not, whether she thinks she did wrong or not, I still had a fence in my heart because I felt that she wronged me. And I'm just giving you this story as an example. But when I chose to forgive her, I, I truly, in my heart, I released that. I released her from that. From what I was holding against her, I released her from that. And the burden was lifted. But guess who the burden was lifted off of? It wasn't really her, even though it did impact her. It was lifted off of me. See, I was carrying the burden of that offense. I was letting that offense create resentment in my heart and a root of bitterness. But when I truly forgave her, it just, it not only released her, but it released me. Because, see, that was a poison in my own heart. And in a moment, I got that poison out. There's a movie out there that really does a great job of explaining this. And it's called The Shack. And I know there's some people out there that, some out there love the movie, some disagree with certain parts of it. I'm not getting into that. But the whole storyline, it gets to a place where it, 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 it's a story really of this person being offended at God because of some tra a tragic thing that happened in his life. And I'm not going to spoil the movie for you if you hadn't seen it. But he is offended at God. And the story, it, it walks him through the process of forgiveness. And it is a, it's a powerful, powerful story. It's a powerful movie. And I know that there's a book written about it too. Uh, I didn't read the book. I watched the movie. But people always say the book is a lot better. But it walks this guy through. And, it, and if you hadn't seen that movie, I encourage you to go see it. Or read the book or whatever you want to do. But it is a... I haven't read the book, so I can't vouch for the book. But the movie is based off the book. So, But it is a powerful story of God walking this man through forgiveness. And I think it does a great job of illustrating it. But there is such a power in forgiveness. In Mark chapter 11, you know, there's the famous verses 23 and 24, but right after that, verse 25, it's either the second part of 24 or verse 25. It talks about, and if you have anything against anyone, I can't remember, let's, let's just go over here because I can't remember exactly how it words it. Let's see, Mark eleven twenty five. See, but when you are praying, let's see, that's not in the translation I want to be in. It says, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. This is, the, this is written in red. This is the words of Jesus. He is saying, forgive if you have anything, not some things, but anything against who? Against anyone. So for anything and anyone, you are commanded to forgive. And then it goes on to say, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. So Jesus is telling us for anything, any situation with anyone, you forgive so that your father your father forgives your trespasses. We are commanded to forgive. And again, it's it's such a it's such a poison when we don't forgive. And it's so freeing and so liberating the moment that we truly forgive in our heart. And I want to tell you brothers and sisters, it is a choice. You choose whether to be offended or whether to forgive. It is totally up to you. You can't blame anybody else. You can say, oh, this you don't know what this person did to me and all this. Look, I understand that there's there have been some situations that some people did some really messed up things to other people. I understand that. 
but it's still your choice whether you forgive or whether you take offense. And look, offenses are going to come. Jesus even said, offenses are going to come. So it's impossible to go through life and not face the, the temptation to be offended. But you can choose. You can choose whether to receive it or whether to give it or put it back off on God and resist it. It is your choice. Let's look at some things uh, Jesus said about offense. And just to finish my story real quick, uh, I chose to forgive my mom. And I wrote her a letter saying I was sorry. And uh, told her told her just what I felt. I told her I didn't want anything to happen to one of us and and us be in this this you know state. To be in this um had this resentment and told her that I forgave her and that I loved her and that was a powerful moment for me and I and one see the thing is is when we say we forgive though we need to truly do it in our heart and that means quit bringing stuff back up from the past in a in a negative way So, for example, my, my mom and I, if, you know, if we're talking about, you know, how God has transformed me or something, you know, that, that may get brought up, but I don't, I wouldn't ever bring that up to put any kind of guilt on her or to shame her in any way. I brought it up now to make a point, to illustrate a point, but I would never do that to, again, to just make her feel guilty or anything like that. And so it's important when we forgive to let things go. To not keep digging things up in the past. That's so important. And we got to make a decision. And look, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't do this perfectly. But for the most part, I don't bring up stuff from the past and use it against people. And you shouldn't either. Because a sign that you really haven't forgiven is continuously bringing stuff up. And a lot of people do this. But we're not supposed to be like a lot of people. We are disciples and followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we truly forgive someone, we need to just let it go. And we need to make a decision to not bring those things up anymore. And so I forgave my mom. I went. I ended up uh, going off and going to prison, and uh, you know, and I allowed my mom to come visit me, and along with my grandparents and my dad and and others. And I truly forgave, and we began restoring our relationship. And even to this day, you know that if I would have allowed that, I could have let that separate me from my own mom for the rest of my life. And I'm so glad I made that decision to forgive. And so now we have a good relationship. And, you know, we talk consistently and everything's good. But there's a power in forgiveness, folks. Let's see what Jesus says about it. So in Matthew... 11.6 Matthew 11.6 Jesus said, And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. That is certainly true. See, the ones that are offended at Jesus... It robs them of blessing. But folks, I can tell you from experience, from knowledge, from the Word, that not only being offended at Jesus, but being offended at other people can rob you of blessing in your life. 
It's not God revoking the blessing. God has already blessed us. But when we choose offense, sometimes that's saying no to the blessing. Again, because Jesus commanded that we forgive. And we can be so consumed by offense that we miss opportunity on what God has provided for us. Let's go to Matthew 13, 21. The parable of the sower, and it says, Yet he who has no root in himself, but endures for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. It's literally translated, he stumbles. And what that means, to stumble or to fall away, that means being offended, taking offense. Now there's a difference from offense coming and then you being offended. But that falling away, that stumbling, that's talking about being offended. Let's go to John 6.61. John 6.61. It says, but Jesus, knowing in himself that his disciples were grumbling about this, said to them, do you take offense at this? So Jesus, perceiving that they were taking offense, and this is referring to when he said he is the bread of life. And there's many, many, I'm running out of time, but there's many, many more examples of offense in the Bible. But again, going back to what Jesus said, he commanded us not to take offense. And folks, if we will make this decision, and I just want to give you an example, what does this look like? When there is a situation and I am tempted to be offended, I will I will get alone with the Lord. I sometimes I'll just walk outside or whatever I got to do. And I will I will say it out loud. I refuse this. I refuse to be offended right now in Jesus name. Lord, I give this to you. I give this offense to you. I refuse to carry it. And then I will give it to the Lord and when that tries to come back later, I said, "No, I refuse to be offended." I had that attitude in my heart toward offense, and you know, when, if there's other people around, I'm not, I'm not just going to start saying that out loud. But I will have that adi- that uh, attitude in my heart, and when I get some alone time, I will, I will do that. No, I refuse to be offended. And here's the other key: is don't let your mind dwell on the offense. Shift your mind to positive things, as it says in Philippians 4:8. Whatever things are true and noble or and worthy and and he's got a whole list there. I can't remember it word for word. Whatever is honorable, whatever is of good report. Think on these things. So you give it to the Lord. Refuse to pick it back up. And I can tell you, folks, I have I have adopted this attitude of the heart. And I, I often say I refuse to be offended. And that is true. I mean that 100%. No matter what happens, I refuse to be offended in my heart. And I tell you what, it has radically transformed my life. All right, well, I hope you got something out.